Good evening, everyone. Pastor Song Bei from here from Lighthouse Global. Um, I hope you all are doing well. I'm gonna wait until some of you find me. We're gonna go ahead and release the word for the month of August. I hope everyone is doing well. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for no interruption. I pray for good um, signal and connection with you and with um, everything around us. We just pray that your mighty word will go forth today in this evening in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. And I just pray for just the spirit of the Lord to just touch our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome, everyone. I'm going to wait till some of you find me today. I'm going to be releasing a word on um, a monthly prophetic word for August 2024. And uh, I, I'm really excited. I feel like there's so much more to it. Sometimes I start off with a word and then as as I release it, God gives me fresh revelation. But, you know, um, the word I wrote the, on the, on the um, cover, I said recompense. And really, it wasn't something that I prayed for a long time about it. The Lord just highlighted recompense to me for the month of August. And then before I came on today, the only thing God has clearly spoken to me was Naboth's Vineyard. I don't know if you are familiar with Naboth's Vineyard. We're going to go through this word about Naboth's, Naboth's Vineyard. Um, so I'm going to read from, uh, oh, is it Second Samuel? Let me see. Oh, I have all the Bible verse, but I forgot to um, write which chapter it is. I just want to make sure that I'm in the right book. It's in First Kings, I believe. Yes, it's First Kings, chapter twenty-one. First Kings, chapter twenty-one. Um, the Lord said Naboth's vineyard, and I was, uh, I, I, as I was studying this word, I really understood what the Lord was trying to say. So basically, Naboth is. Uh, the, the righteous man who lived during um, Ahab's days. I'm going to read from verse 21. Sometime later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth. He, he was a righteous man who had the vineyard, the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, let me have your vineyard and to see, uh, to use for a vegetarian vegetable garden since, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. Um, but Naboth replied, the Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. So Ahab went home sullen and angry because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my, in, my, my ancestors. I'm reading from the Bible right now. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth, the Jezreelite, um, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard. And, and he said, I will not give it to you. So this is a story playing out. The Lord today uh, gave me, it just dropped my head because I wasn't really thinking about Naboth. Who, just on a regular day, think about Naboth. I wasn't even doing studies on Naboth, but it literally came to my mind. And I knew there was a very prophetic significance of what God wanted to tell us about Naboth. The, the righteous man who refused to sell his inheritance to Ahab the king. Can you imagine? So let's just put this in the context, right? So this story, many of you know of how Jezebel would step in because one characteristic of Ahab is that he becomes, he reacts reacts immature. He's a king, but he if he wants something, it's just a typical selfish narcissistic behavior. Ahab wanted something because he was a king. He, he, he basically kind of takes it from people, but when 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 they say no his reaction is sullen and angry and i always one of one of the markers of how you recognize an ahab spirit in some person or leadership is when they react in such a way that it's very um childlike and I'm, I'm talking about immature like sullen it means you know you 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 receive the rejection and you're acting like you're a five-year-old who's mad at the parent or something right he was sullen and angry because this this man uh, Naboth said no this is from uh, from the Lord and inheritance from my ancestors so he had some value systems in him um, and then when when Ahab was upset wife Jezebel came in and uh, tried to handle everything right that's the Jezebel spirit 
So I'm just gonna I'm gonna read through it just to give you context. Jezebel, his wife said, "Is this now? Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat, cheer up. I'll give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelites." So, this is classic Jezebel. Jezebel writes a letter in her husband Ahab's name, which she didn't have authority over. So Jezebel's spirit is a spirit that takes the name of a, of, of somebody in authority without any permission. Just uh, and, and he, she seals it, sends it over to elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him in, in those letters she wrote. So she, she wrote a strategy or a scheme against Naboth and literally kills him. Proclaim a day of fasting and, and seat Naboth in, in a prominent place among the people. Uh, but seat, seat two scoundrels opposite him and get, have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king. So Jezebel tells the elders, the people there to play out this scheme of having uh, two scoundrels planted, uh, then take him, take him out and stone him to death. So it's a, it's a plan to basically kill Naboth and Jezebel executes it. So verse 11, it says, so the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth city did as Jezebel directed in the letter she had written to them because it had King's uh, mark on it. So these people were thinking that the king Ahab had uh, asked to do this. They proclaimed the fast and seat of Naboth in the prominent place among the people, so in public. Uh, the two scoundrels came and sat opposite him and caught, brought charges against Naboth. So there was false accusation against Naboth before the people and saying Naboth has cursed both God and king. So false accusation. Uh, so they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. And then they sent a word to Jezebel, Naboth, Naboth has been sto stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth, Naboth has, had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, that if you, he refused to sell you. He's no longer alive but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. It's almost like, you know, one of the signs of a narcissist or, or, or somebody that is um, selfish and, and immature carries a Ahab spirit, they always have flying monkeys. Now, flying monkeys are people who do the dirty work for, for the king. Or Ahab is not the one that executed things righteously or reacted or responded or had a solution. Never comes up with the solution and executes it, but have somebody else like Jezebel or minions do things on behalf of them. So that's how the, when you read the story, that's how the kingdom of darkness and that's how Jezebel's kingdom operates. So we have to be aware of that. Isn't it interesting how God is giving me this word about Naboth's vineyard totally separately. One recompense a few days ago. So I said, okay, I think I'm going to release a word on recompense in August. And then Naboth's vineyard just came to me today um, before I, really, I, I was uh, about to do this word. And then the word of the Lord came to Jezebel and then Elijah, go down and meet Ahab, king of Israel, the ruler of Samaria. He is now he is now in Naboth's vineyard, where he has gone to take possession of it. Say to him, this is what the Lord says. Have you not murdered a man and seized his property? So God exposes this to Elijah, the prophet, and commands Elijah to go and expose the sin of the king. Um, and then say to him, this is what the Lord said. Have you not murdered a man? See, this is Then say to him, this is what the Lord says. In the place where dogs licked up Naboth's blood, dogs will lick up your blood. Yes, yours. It is, it is a word of judgment coming out of Elijah to the king. And I have said to Elijah, so you have found me, my enemy, right? I have found you, he answered. Uh, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the eyes of the Lord, he says, I am going to bring disaster on you. I will wipe out your descendants and cut off from Ahab every last male in Israel, slave or free. So this is a word of judgment that comes. So this is a massive incident that happens right behind the scenes. While Ahab did evil before the uh, in the eyes of the Lord, what really released a word of judgment, the deciding event was him killing an innocent man and taking something from him. Naboth. Um, and so this is the word that, that Elijah releases. Uh, and I will make your house like that of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and that of Basha, son of Ahijah, because you have aroused my anger and have caused Israel to sin. And also concerning Je Jezebel, the Lord says, and then the wife who was in it together, uh, Elijah releases the word, dogs will devour Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Now this is 
a word that does come to pass, right? That she falls uh, from a tower and uh, she's, you know, she, her body is just, just, you know, dismembered. Dogs will eat those belonging to Ahab who die in the city and the birds will feed on those who die in the country. Oh, it's just the word of judgment that Elijah releases. So when Ahab heard these words, he tore his clothes, put on sackcloth and fasted. He lay in sackcloth and went around meekly. So he had taken Elijah seriously and uh, started repenting. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, uh, the Tishbite. Um, have you noticed how Ahab had humbled himself before me? Because he has humbled himself, I will not bring disaster in his day, but I will bring it on his house in the days of his son. So that is the story line of, of what I believe God is trying to tell us about recompense and Naboth's vineyard. So you heard the story number one. This is what I believe God is saying. Um, God will release vengeance over the righteous man's blood. Now it is kind of a strong word, you know, as I was preparing, I wasn't thinking that it was a strong word because I, I think I was thinking that, um, in the body, in the body, in the world right now, this doesn't sound unfamiliar, sadly, meaning it doesn't sound off to me where Jezebel literally goes behind some behind the back and devises a plan to kill a righteous person's, you know, take a righteous person's property and kill them. So it, it doesn't sound unfamiliar, sadly, that's the, the kind of evil world that we live in, right? So, but when you think about it, it is quite alarming the lord is saying that he will release vengeance over the righteous man's blood naboth was a righteous man now what made naboth more righteous than ahab ahab was not he did not understand the value of inheritance and what was to be uh, to be bargained and what was not to be bargained naboth was a righteous man before god because he said this is an inheritance that was given from the lord to my ancestors now listen very carefully right now there's that um this is what's going on right now. This is what's going on. People who think that it embodies like spirit of mammon where you think with money you can buy things off. You can manipulate control. You can get people to do things for you. Well, that is not righteousness at all. Where is your value system? What do you put place value in? In the inheritance that God has given you? Are you willing to say no to certain things? I believe this is where the dividing line between a righteous man and an unrighteous man, evil man, it comes where the enemy is going to try to constantly uh, pull you in a place of not understanding the values of what God's given you, uh, degrade you and allow, you know, tempt you to sell things that you're not supposed to sell. The enemy will come in to give you a better offer for that moment for the things that you're not supposed to sell. I believe this is happening right now, right before our eyes. You know, don't sell your land just because you need money. Don't sell it off to people who are evil and unrighteous. We're going to un do unrighteous things. I'm talking about fiscal land that's in America and different countries. You know, people are because they need money. They think that that's what they need. So they just sell off things piece by piece. You know, it, it's, it's just unrighteous. But I believe God is saying um, that he will release vengeance over the righteous man's blood. Uh, and, and he's going to give you and I a vision and a, and a perspective and an understanding of what it means to be a man or woman of righteousness. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all the Naboths out there. If you can relate to that. Pastor, I feel like I, I was in a place of Naboth where I had an offer and I said no and all hell broke loose with, against me. Um... I, don't, I didn't identify it as Jezebel spirit. I didn't have like King Ahab, but there were things that happened behind my back where the enemy tried to kill me because I said no to certain things. Father, I pray that you will give us eyes to see what it means to be righteous right now. And those who have been played against by the enemy, I pray that you would release vengeance of the Lord upon their lives right now. Number two, in the month of August, this, this is becoming a kind of a heavy word. <laughs> My goodness, I wasn't thinking that, but as, as I'm releasing it, it just feels really heavy, meaning very significant. Number two, in the month of August, I believe the root, root of the cause or the initial attack will be revealed. So can you imagine the, the prophetic word of judgment released from Elijah? Um, what caused it was this incident of Naboth's vineyard, be, you know, Ahab wanting that. Um, 
that land for himself. Some of you, I believe in the world, in politics, in your circle, that this month, God is going to expose to you and myself and many others where everything started, what that issue was. Because many of you are not even understanding what to repent of even because you don't know where the root cause was, where it all started, who did you come against, what did my family line do, where did this all start, right? So where all of this started was Naboth's righteousness caused Jezebel to act out and play her game. The root of the cause will be revealed in the month of August. In this case, it was Naboth and Ahab wanting something that was not his. Of course, the evil, evilness of his heart. But I believe in the month of August, God is going to expose some root issues that have been hidden for a long time. And I believe the exposure that you will experience may shock you, but it will also bring great relief to you. The exposure that you will experience will bring great relief to you because it is like if you understand the root cause of where everything started to go wrong, then you're able to repent, you're able to pull it out by the grace of God. And that is the word I'm releasing over you right now. For some of you who have been under some kind of a curse, how many of you feel like you need a breakthrough and you, you prayed all sorts of prayer, but you're not, you're not quite sure why there is not a breakthrough. Your breakthrough might not be present because you have not fully understood or God has not revealed to you the root cause or the root issue or the root incident or the root um, beginnings of why things started going wrong. It may be in your family line. It may be something that happened in your childhood. It may be family hidden secret, something. So I believe in the month of August, this is a good word, that God is going to expose and reveal the root cause of, of everything that, that unfolded. If you are on the side of a neighbor, this is a good thing because God's going to expose to you who was against you and who did what. Number three, the blood of the martyrs are crying out for righteousness. And so as I was preparing this word about recompense, I really felt that on a global scale and in, in the body of Christ, the Lord is listening and hearing and the cup is overflowing. The, the cries of the martyrs, the, the blood of the martyrs, it is, it is being um, filled up in the heavenly courts. So Revelation 6, it says, I looked and there before me was a pale horse. Okay, I'm not going to read that verse. Verse 9 says, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. Now listen, I love that verse. How do you become an end times warrior? You become a righteous bride of Christ because of the testimony that you maintain. Listen carefully. You have to maintain the testimony that God's given you. You cannot waver. It's because of the word of God that is in you. It's not because of your fancy prayers. It's not because of your beautiful voice. It's not because of your great ministry. It is not because of your, I don't know, but the, the evangelism you did. It's not because of how much money you gave to the church. It is because of the word of God and the testimony that you have maintained. So if you want to stand on the place of righteousness, if you want to see a recompense before you request to God to see your recompense, have you been on the place of righteousness? Righteousness. How have you maintained and managed your testimony of who Jesus is? If you have compromised your testimony, if you're watering down your testimony, if you're bringing a mixture, if you're unsure about your salvation, then that has to be fixed. That has to be repented. That has to be redeemed. That has to turn around. So God says, and so, so I love this verse where it says, those who have been slain, who have been persecuted, who have died for the cause of Jesus because of the testimony that they have maintained. Warriors, maintain your testimony. Do not give it up. Do not give up who Jesus is in your life. Do not compromise in Jesus' name. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? So right now, as we speak, this is going on in the heavenly realm. This is going on in the spirit realm, in the heavens, where martyrs are constantly worshiping Jesus. But also, they're crying out to God and saying, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Because these martyrs have shed the blood here on earth then each of them was given a white robe and they were told to wait a little longer 
This is St. John seeing this until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters were killed just as they have been. So the, this century have been or this century has been the modern days have been uh, the, the record number of Christians that have been martyred. Did you know that um, the times we're living in, we are seeing more number of Christian martyrs than ever before in the history of the earth? So that cup is being being filled right now, even as we speak. The number of the fellow servants, brothers and sisters, were killed as, as the martyrs have been. The number is going up and up. Those who are dying for Jesus, the number is increasing in record numbers. So that's the kind of time that we're living in. Those who are in the Western world, who are in comfortable America, who feel like persecution is way out of your league. Listen, it's here and it's, it's here. It's here. True faith is tested by persecution or your faith is tested when you're being persecuted however you want to say it if you have been under persecution god bless you you're in the right track if you are sensing persecution if you're feeling the attacks if you're feeling tested if you're if you are under attack if you're being persecuted you are a true disciple of jesus christ so father i pray that even as we enter into this year, and there has been a lot of turbulence. This week, even I sent such a attack of the enemy against any initiative that we put out there for revival. I sense it. It is going on. I'm just not talking to you too much about it because I don't want to whine about it because I don't want to complain about it because complaints, the devil loves complaints. The enemy loves uh, complaining is a form of witchcraft. It's how you manipulate. So I'm not complaining to you at all about what I'm sensing. But what I am sensing is that the level of persecution, the level of apathy, the level of lack of love, the level of coldness of heart, the level of betrayal, the level of selfishness, the level of just demonic things, it's just increased. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't even talk about it because I don't want to give it any attention. Well, I just have to focus on keeping my testimony pure and holy and maintaining it because I want to be tried and tested and I want to endure through the tough times that we are in and that we're entering into. In Jesus name. But the, but the blood of the martyrs right now in, in the heavenly realm, it's crying out for righteousness. And God is saying in the month of August, we are going to see recompense. We're going to start seeing tables churning. So if you declare uh, and believe this with me, say yes and amen right now. Number one, uh, number four, lastly, I want to say there's recompense that is coming uh, for Naboth's uh, vineyard. And God is saying God is catching thieves. I believe in this month for many of you, the Lord is going to bring thieves to you that you didn't even know about. By that, I mean the thefts that you have experienced and you didn't quite know who was actually stealing from you. And it may be somebody totally unexpected. It may be your pastor. It may be your intercessor. Those who claim to be your intercessor, they're actually stealing from you, stealing information from you, stealing anointing from you. The, the, these will be caught this month in Jesus' name. So, Father, I thank you for the recompense that is coming. God is catching thieves. The Bible says, Proverbs 6, it says, Yet if he is caught, he must pay sevenfold, though it cost him all the wealth of his house. So the Lord is saying that he's, the enemy is going to be caught. The thief that you didn't know about, that you didn't recognize, that was right around the corner, you're going to be able to catch it. Because you didn't catch it, because you didn't recognize the thief that was right, right in front of you, you allowed theft in your life. You allowed theft. Let me tell you, it could be something as small as you allow the enemy to steal your joy because of your inner anger where God's going to deal with that. The Lord is going to deal with, he's going to catch a thief inside your heart that has been stealing your destiny, stealing your time, stealing your mental energy. So Father, we give you permission in this month of August for you to come in, invade in our lives, our every realm, physical body too, to catch the thieves that have been stealing resources from us. Men and women of God, you are mighty. You know what I think? I think if we are full of the Spirit of God, I truly believe revival is not in the number of masses. Revival is not what you think it is. I truly believe revival starts with that one person who is fully committed and devoted, fully on fire for God. And I repent before you right now, even because on, on, on Facebook, on, when I'm preaching and ministering to you, it may look like I'm fully devoted, but I know in my private life, there are things in my life where I'm allowing the devil to steal. 
It is because I have naively or unknowingly or out of my stupidity or out of my sin, I allowed it. I, I allow the devil to, I allow the enemy to roam about me, to give me an um, idle time or, or be idle. Some of you may think, oh, Pastor Saul, you're, you, you work too hard for the Lord. No. Yes, that's what you think, but that, maybe that's not what God thinks. So I know that the Lord has to catch those thieves. God has to catch them for me. So we are giving God permission this month. You and I are going to give the Lord permission. God, catch the thieves. Because we don't want we don't want the devil to steal any of our things any longer. Everything that belongs to God, it belongs to God. You, yourself, your family, your mental state. you got to be have a sound mind. The devil stole your mind. Stop watching that, that, I don't know, the stop watching television. Stop watching, I don't know, Korean drama. Korean drama is stealing your mental energy. How many of you subscribe to Korean drama? Stop it. Why are you allowing the idle thoughts of whatever Korean drama to steal your time? Something as small as that. God, I pray that this month you will catch the thieves in our lives and the devil will have to pay sevenfold in Jesus' name and fill us up with the Spirit of God. Fill us up with the goodness of the Lord. Fill us up with the Word of God and the testimony of our lives. God, fill us with everything that is you. Overflowing that we will be effective. We will be living in the fullness of God himself. In fullness of Christ himself. Fill me up with you, Jesus. I am yours and you are mine. We repent for allowing thieves in our lives. In Jesus' name. And God, I pray for recompense. I pray for wisdom to know what is right and what is wrong. What is righteous and what is unrighteous. Naboth protected, wanted to protect and said no to Ahab. And that cost him his life. His righteousness costed him his life. God, help us to see how to say no to certain things that may cost us our fleshly lives, but we say yes to you, God, because you're a God of vengeance. God says in the month of August, I'm bringing exposure. I'm bringing revelation and deeper understanding of what I want to give back to you, says the Lord. Some of you don't quite even understand that you actually needed recompense. You actually needed God to step in and allow vengeance in your life. Because you're very nice. Some of you are too nice to the devil. You invite devil in and you just allow the devil to play in your playground. And God is saying no. So Father, the church walls need to be protected. The pastors and ministers, I prophesy over you. I prophesy over pastors, don't allow the devil to come into your playground. The church needs to be a shining light for Jesus. God, I pray that you will protect our uh, boundaries of our ministry realm, of our family realm in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. No more in Jesus' name. All of this, this word, I believe, applies to many contexts. What's going on, you see, in the political realm, in the USA, in all other countries right now, Venezuela, what you see going on in the Olympics, what you see going on in the school systems, what you see going on in different dynamics with different nations. You know, different nations are sneaking in and saying, sell me the inheritance that God has given you. And many who have that inheritance said yes and uh, allow Ahab and Jezebel to just come in and play with your stuff. That is why you are cursed. That is why you're not increasing. And God said, I'm exposing that. The very thing you said yes to 10 years ago, I am not pleased, says the Lord. The Lord already shown me when I watched the news, I am not pleased with that. When, when a president of a nation is welcoming another president, and you know, when I'm looking at like these nations coming together and presidents shaking hands, God would speak to me and say, I am not pleased with that alignment. Because the president was not like Naboth. But the president just said, yeah, Ahab, come on in. Come into my house and take all my things. If you give me my money, I'll just take the other vineyard. I don't care if it's God or if it's somebody else. That's what's happening right now all around the world. God is going to deal with this. So, Father, I pray that you would give boldness to the church and the righteous men and women to stand up and say no. In Jesus' name, let your yes be yes and no be no, says the Lord. Father, I pray for pastors and leaders and intercessors. 
To be bold and courageous in this hour in Jesus' name. No more stealing, devil. And Father, I pray for, for revelation about what it means to be on fire for Jesus. The idle thoughts, the, 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 the wastefulness that we have in our mentality. With your spare time, what do you do? I want you to pray. With your spare time, spare, I don't know, spare coins, spare chain. With your spare, I don't know, whatever you do. What do you do? Do you go and uh, exercise? What do you do? What do you do for yourself? If, if us who say we're on fire for Jesus, if we give it all to Jesus, revival is already here, people. It will be, you, your house will already have been flipped. If you are not idle, I think one of the biggest enemy of the modern day is laziness and wastefulness. You're wasting time. You're wasting energy. You're wasting resources. You're wasting your emotions on things that are useless. So, Father, I pray for repentance over the body of Christ right now in Jesus' name. And I pray for a noun word right now. I encourage you to read uh, the word I posted on Olympics a few days ago, uh, when before it started, or on the day that it started, about how there's dismantling of everything. Um, and pay attention to the numbers, the and scores, and everything. So I, I want you to read that again because I want to follow up with it. I believe some of those words will come to pass. And there is, uh, God is raising up a company of Elijahs who are not afraid to speak these words to, to Ahabs and Jezebels. What's really impressive about this Bible verse is when Elijah went and spoke to Ahab, his final uh, destiny, judgment of God. And it happened exactly as Elijah sp has spoken. The Lord is saying, I am releasing the spirit of Elijah upon my prophets and prophetesses. God, I pray that God, your fire will come upon Elijah's in this hour. That we would not be afraid to speak what God, you put in our hearts, in our spirits. Father, out of your compassion, bring repentance upon this nation of America that is so in sin and compromise. California is burning right now. I believe it's a sign of judgment. I believe God is saying, California, turn back to Jesus. While there is revival, there's also fake fire, fake revivals, fake charismatics, fake Holy Spirit. And the Lord is exposing that. He's not pleased with the church the way it was and the way it is. The Lord is exposing as painful as it is. God is saying in the month of August, you will see even greater exposure of different hidden sins and different things. The Ahab-like quality that many of the men of God had carried, God is going to expose it. And the Lord at the same time will judge and deal with the Jezebel spirits. So Father, I pray for just, uh, just us to hold on to the testimony of who you are. And not compromise in this hour in Jesus' name. That is what I hear from the Lord. Goodness, I thought it was going to be a light word and a short one. But as I'm preaching this and releasing this word, it is kind of heavy on me. I do sense a lot of grief, you know, um, I wish it was a brighter note, like, oh yeah, you're going to get all your money back, <laughs> but I'm not releasing that because my question for you is, those who have been righteous will get their recompense, but have you been? That's my question for you. Have you been righteous or have you not been? May you see that and bring yourself to repentance in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for a mighty move of God. Mighty move of God. And do not take other people's things, says the Lord. Don't steal, kill, and destroy. Don't be the tool of the enemy. This is going on inside the church. People steal, try to steal the anointing. People try to steal. You know how uh, Azusa Street Revival ended? William Seymour? It's because one of the secretaries, one of the ladies who had a crush on William Seymour, wanted to marry him, was angry that he married somebody else and took all the mailing lists. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? A lady uh, was mad and took all the contacts and went up somewhere and started her own thing. Isn't that crazy? This is in the middle of experiencing revival. My goodness, don't take stuff from other people. God sees. God sees. Don't take other people's mailing list. Email contacts. 
don't go behind somebody's back and try to reach out to them to, to get them to be on your side and give you money. Don't do things like that. Father, I pray you know everything inside out. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. You'll purify your bride right now. God says, yeah, the fire is only going to increase. And we are doing fire revival of Zuzu Street at the end of August 24th and 25th. I think we're going to do it for two days. But I pray for fire. You know, when I got that word fire, that's it, fire. Meaning we need the fire to burn everything demonic, burn everything of the flesh and purify us. We need the fire of God. So God, have mercy on us in Jesus' name. Amen. That is the word I have for you. And I know there's a lot that I am putting out there. Uh, please uh, keep up with the messages I'm sending. Um, God bless you. And I hope uh, you share this on your wall and encourage other people to also listen later. Uh, happy August. Bye.